Hello there, it's Dylan. And today I'm going to answer a comment by Vipandris who says, I'd love to hear why you switched to Odin. And I'm going to assume that he means from C, because most of my channel is about programming in C. Uh, he or she, I don't know. Um, but I mean, it's probably a he. I got like a 100% male audience. But anyway, um, let's just go over the reasons. So the number one for me is header files. Now, header files. I just think are really annoying for one thing, because every time you change a function signature, you've got to update the header file as well, which is not too bad. I mean, you copy it, change, go to the header, paste it, delete the old one, but still it's just, just annoying. Forward declarations are really annoying because the compiler can't figure out because they're not spec to, I guess the C language spec doesn't say that they have to figure out out of order, um, you know, declarations of, of functions or types or anything. So that's really annoying. Whereas in Odin, you can just declare functions wherever. Second biggest issue, well, maybe, I don't know if I'm going in biggest to, to smallest, but another issue I've got is um, vector types or not vector types, more like math types that you might want to use, like vector two, vector three, vector four matrix, uh, four by four matrix or three by three matrix or something like that. They're all just built into Odin. So you don't have to do anything to make them work. You can multiply vectors by scalars and all that kind of stuff. You can um, you can grab the values using x, y, z, w or r, g, b, a for vector fours. Just off the bat, you don't have to make any types. You don't have to make any weird union union things like what I do in C to kind of get around the language limitations. Yeah, so that's really handy. I quite like that. And another thing is in C, there's a bunch of ambiguous types like char, int, short, long, long, long. I know there's std int as well, um, which is what I pretty much always end up using or I make my own types or something. But, you know, I just find uh, the ambiguous nature of that stuff annoying. And somewhere where it actually really tripped me up was when I was building a memory allocator and I had some definitions like macros, uh, macro functions for kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes, right? So you have like define capital MB, and then X is your thing you pass in. And then the result was supposed to be KB with the X passed into KB. And then the KB function would just be X times 1024. Now, if you're a seasoned veteran, you might've already caught what the problem is. But basically my 1024 that I was multiplying by was defaulting to an int 32. So then when I tried to allocate, I think it was two or three gigs or something like that, it was just overflowing and my memory allocator actual space was much less than I thought. And then I was getting, you know, I was writing out of bounds and stuff. So that was really annoying when I find out you have to put the 1024 and then a capital U and an LL for unsigned long, long to make sure that that doesn't get auto cast to an in 32 uh what well, depends on your platform but yeah you know that kind of stuff i just find it annoying <laughs> um what else uh speaking of memory allocators odin has built-in memory allocators that are really good um or at least i haven't found any issues with them and there's a lot of people using them and i haven't really seen people building custom ones much so that's really nice actually it was ginger bill the creator of of odin uh, his articles were the ones I used to build my memory allocators in C anyway. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and because they're, because the allocators are baked into the language design, then all the libraries use them. So everyone uses a shared, uh, not spec, but they, they all use the same kind of allocator. They all use the same type, which means if you want to override the memory allocator of a library, you just pass in a different, like your own one. And because it's standardized across the language, you can easily do that. You don't have to like provide a wrapper f like macro definition that you override or something like you do in C. So it's pretty good. I like that a lot. Another one is multiple return values. So what I would do in C a lot of the time is I would either have like a custom struct type. So let's say I'm returning a file, um, could be, or the contents of a file, let's say, and I've got it like a struct file. Actually, that would be a string. Anyway, I'm returning something from one of my functions. Uh, I would usually have the type 
and then some kind of data and then I would have a boolean just saying whether it's okay or not. Um, with Odin, because you have multiple return types, you can just return the data and a boolean saying whether it's okay or you can return the data and an error. And there's a couple of things built into the language that make working with this easier as well. There's like a, an or else statement that you can use. So if you're assigning a variable, let's say assigning X to the result of some function call and the function call returns, hey, this failed and you type or else and then the default value that you want. So that's, that's some kind of cool stuff like that. Another one is slices and dynamic arrays being built into the language. That's really handy. Slices are great. I usually made my own slice kind of thing in C and my own dynamic arrays as well. So having them built in is really just useful. Oh, strings. <laughs> strings in C, they're just not great. I just don't think that null terminator strings are really that good. And at the same time as that, the standard library string functions are just not fun to use. Uh, some of them just clobber your strings, so you've got to make sure that you copy them first, but they're, just everything about it is just archaic and annoying. Okay, I think the context system is really cool. Uh, what that is, is basically there's this invisible struct that gets passed to all of your functions in Odin, and it's got a few values on it. And one of them is an allocator, a memory allocator, and another one is a temporary allocator. I think by default, they're both arena allocators, and you can override them at any point during your uh, program. And if you override it, let's say you call some function from main, and then you override the allocator there, then every function you call after you've overridden it will use that new allocator. And then once you come back out, once the stack unwinds and you come back out, and then you go back into main, you're gonna use the normal allocator again, before, like before you overrode it. So I think that's really cool. So it means that for particular code paths, you just override the allocator in the context, and then you know which one you're going to be using, which is quite nice. Now, I used to like the Zig approach where everything was explicit. There's no implicit context in Zig. So in Zig, you've got to pass your allocator to every function call, which takes an allocator. And I understand why that's good, because when you're just reading the code without any tools, you can see, oh, this function takes an, um, uh, this function call passes in an allocator. But if you're reading Odin, you don't necessarily have to pass it in because it's a, an implicit thing on the context. Sometimes it's a default uh, argument on the on the procedure. So yeah, depending on which way you do it, you might not even know that there's allocation going on, which can be confusing. I will I will say that. But the convention usually is that if a procedure allocates memory, then you can also pass in an allocator to override the one that is being used. So people usually stick to that and I do that as well. And finally, uh, last but not least, I've actually found this to be quite nice, is there's a bunch of untyped, untyped types <laughs> in Odin. So for example, if you just write the number 42, it's an untyped integer. And what that means is you can multiply it with a typed integer, let's say an int eight, like an eight bit integer or something, and it'll convert to that other type. So that works for all types, including floating point that could multiply with the untyped type. And you've got the same with floating point numbers. You can just put like six, six point nine, and then multiply that with whatever. Um, but the thing you multiply it with has to be multiplicable with floating points. So a float 32, float 64, and there's some other types as well that would work. Uh, but yeah, I think that's really useful. I guess, um, to sum it up, I feel like the language is modern and minimal, which is really nice because I don't like all the bloat that we've got in a lot of other languages. It's modern, minimal, it has everything I need. And the community is actually really good, which is something that I don't know if I want to go into, but let's just say some other modern languages that may or may not have been mentioned in this video don't really have good communities. Um, and there's a couple of other ones that, <laughs> that I didn't mention that come to mind. Yeah. But the Odin community is really nice. Everyone's very chill and they're just trying to help each other as far as I can tell. There's no like crazy evangelist people in there, which is cool. And yeah, it feels like the language is, is built on pieces that all support each other quite nicely. Instead of 
everyone's building their own specific implementations of everything like the like what happens in C which is fun don't get me wrong I quite enjoy that but you know it doesn't feel cohesive like when I grab someone's C program it's going to be totally different to how my C program is so I think it's kind of cool that we've got a new language that's just as low level and has a lot of stuff built in the standard library is really good actually that's something I didn't talk about the standard library is great it's got a lot of really useful things and they're really sane and they're not you know they're just not crazy stuff um and uh the vendor library is also really good so when you download odin you also get a bunch of vendor libraries like well raylib is the one that i use the most uh, but there's a bunch of other things in there like mini audio i think is in there and some other rendering libraries sdl2 glfw some things like that and a bunch of other things um but that's really cool so it's kind of like I think they're officially supported uh, because you get them when you download the programming language. So I guess that makes sense. But yeah, those are the reasons that I switched to Odin. So thank you for the comment for Pandras. I hope that answered your question. Or well, it wasn't really a question, but I hope that answered your <laughs> implied question. All right, I'm going to head off. So I'll catch you in the next one.